And I also think a relationship that comes out of a friendship is just so sturdy and strong and amazing. So I love, I love Dunkleman and Jody. What is their chic name? Junk? <laughs> I'm here with Ava Michelle and Angelica Washington from Netflix's Tall Girl 2. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Well, thank you so much. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Good to see you. And like, thanks for taking the time today. Yeah, of course. So my first question is for Ava. Um, now, Jody is in a very different place in sort of the school hierarchy this in this movie than she was in the first very movie. different yes yeah so what was it like sort of bringing that new shade of confidence to the character i think it's so beautiful i think um you know seeing anyone just embrace themselves and be confident and really let their personality come out to mm-hmm. everyone not only the people that they're really close to is something that's really special i think also just the seeing jody walk down the hallway right in the beginning of the movie is just so different from the first one um and for me just portraying that was very fun and also portraying that through her style i think was amazing just her wanting to express herself more in that way was really special yeah definitely and now angelica farida got a lot more to do in this movie which was one of my favorite parts um you know so what was it like sort of going from more of a sidekick to a fully realized and sort of agency driven character on her own yeah well thank you i'm excited that you enjoyed that and um it was i was really excited when i read the script and saw that we were expanding on frida um it made me obviously very excited and um, a little nervous because this character that I have played Farida, like you said, it was more of a, more of a supporting, more of a sidekick thing. So I made her this bold, confident, amazing, fun character. And then we get to see a little bit more of her journey. We meet her parents. We get to see her kind of like doubt herself for the first time and, and just kind of like have a little bit of a moment of, of, Oh wait. So people who like are this confident, like, aren't always this confident. And so um, it was really fun to play with that. And also reminded me that maybe Beyonce isn't always as confident as I think she is. I don't know about Beyonce, but I think you're right about everybody else. (laughs) Right. Um, So, and that kind of leads me to my next question. And Ava, if you could answer it first, and then Angelica, Um, this movie really deals a lot with like negative self-talk and being confident and not being confident. What advice would you give to people watching this movie if they're also dealing with that? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, thankfully we got to have that message in this film. And I think it's something that's super special and will resonate with more people than ever just because of the world right now and everything that's going on. And unfortunately, the rise of mental health. But um, I just really want them to know that, that they're not alone, that so many people go through this. And instead of holding it all inside, which honestly just makes it so much worse, that hopefully seeing this film, you can see that reaching out to people around you to support you is an amazing thing and can really, really help you get through it. So um, I hope that they take that away from this um, and know that you will get through it, even though it may seem like a really hard time. What Ava said was great. Yep. That. And also I hope people just lean into their support systems more. Mm -hmm. Um, We get to see Jody do that a lot. And I think when we remind ourselves that people who love you are going to love you Mm -hmm. and they're going to be there for you if those are your people and um, you get to find out and yeah, all the things she said. There you go. Um, Well, earlier I asked your director, Emily, if she had any favorite sort of teen movie tropes that she liked in particular. Um, So I was wondering, do you have any moments from the genre because it's such a beloved genre? Can you think of any that are your personal favorites? Personal favorites from like this genre? Um, I mean, I would say like any John Hughes film. I feel like it's kind of in this genre. And I think that, you know, they all were so entertaining and funny and dramatic, but they also carried such weight in the messages that they told. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's sometimes that in this industry now we lack that. And I think that it's so important to remember the reason that we're in this industry is, is to tell stories and to affect people and send the right messages. And I am just really honored to be a part of something like that. So all of that. And also I, I, I really love one of my favorite movies. It's pretty recent and I don't necessarily know if I would say it's like family friendly, but definitely in the teen world, I really love book smart. Yeah. And I love the friendship okay. between the two characters and I love 
how we get to see it evolve, like when, when adversity hits them and then how they both overcome it because they love each other so much. Um, and their relationship with each other is like the biggest relationship that they have and the most important one. And so I really love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think tall girl too, does a pretty good job of like centering the friendships as well as the romantic relationships, particularly between you two. Yeah. I agree. I, that was one of my favorite things when reading this script is just how much we got to see Jody and Farida's friendship and how they supported each other in it. I think it's really, really cool. Yeah. Now I also, I do have to ask because Netflix rom-coms, they always bring out the shippers. Are you team Dunkelman or team Tommy? Because I feel like there's a lot of ways you could go with this one. There's so many ways. I mean, I guess people can definitely decide on their own, but if, can I choose? Are we spoiling anything or not? I mean, this is your personal preference. My personal what preference. I am, I'm a team Dunkelman. I think there's something so special in someone who has, I mean, he's loved Jody for who she is truthfully his entire life. And I think that, you know, she's now confident, but he loved her even when she didn't love herself. And I think that that is probably one of the most beautiful things. And I also think a relationship that comes out of a friendship is just, so sturdy and strong and amazing. So I love, I love Dunkelman and Jody. What is their ship name? Junk? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, but that seems a little counter <laughs> to <it. laughs> Team Junk. Well, team me and junk. Jonka, I am also Team Junk. Okay. 100%. I think it <laughs> nailed it on the head. I'm all about consistency yeah. and people who have like been there for you since day one. Like right. love a cute new fling, you know, like yeah. that's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, also love people who, like she said, have loved you since before you even loved yourself. And I think that's really special. Where will this go with her and Dunkelman? I have no idea. You'll have to watch. But if we're just going off shipping, I ship them. I mean, that's really my perspective from the first film. I feel yeah. like I just... Who doesn't love Dunkelman in this film? It's just so sweet. It's true. And now just to kind of wrap up, um, what do you hope people take away from this movie? Like, what do you hope if they can take one thing away from Tall Girl 2, what do you hope is that for viewers? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we definitely touch on that bully that's inside of your head and anxiety. And I know that everyone really deals with that. And so I just really hope that, that they can relate to it and, and watch the journey and, and learn from Jody's mistakes, but also learn from the, the things that she does well, which is, you know, lean on her friends and lean on her family. And um, I really hope that they can just relate and know again, that they're, they're not alone in it. Yeah. I would just add to that, that I hope that people realize like perfection doesn't exist. Hmm. And so because it doesn't, we just have to be more kind to ourselves and just love ourselves for where we're at and yeah. like learning and growing is fine. Starting mm-hmm. something new, mm-hmm. like Jody doing this musical, like starting something new is, is great. And you're never too old, never too young to try new things. And so like the more we can just remind ourselves, like I can try it. I might not be perfect at it and that's okay. Right. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today, ladies. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> Have a good day. I am here with Griffin Gluck, Luke Eisner, and I want to make sure I get this right. Jean-Louis Castellanos. Sounds good to me. Hopefully Perfect. grandma approves. There you go. Um, so the first question is for Griffin and Luke. Um, what was it like coming back to this movie and back to these characters after having played them previously? You know, what were you really looking forward to bringing to their development? You um, want uh, who's going first here? Who's going first? Here? Rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Um, I think, I, you know, I think Luke and I probably share very similar experiences coming back to these characters. Uh, I think these characters are, are definitely versions of our goofiest selves. You know, they're not, they're not necessarily who we are as people, but they are definitely facets of our personality totally. to a very far extreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think it's, you know, it's, it's fun to be able to revisit that side of you. And I, yes. you know, I think what Luke and I did a, a lot during this film is sort of just let go and, and, and have fun and, you know, play around with the scenes and, and the lines, much to the you know chagrin of, of the producers, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> the amount that we played around with the lines. But um, it, it was it, kind of comforting in a way to come back to those characters and, and be able to, to reopen that chapter of your life. You know, we filmed the first one two and a half years yeah. ago. And, and it's, it's kind of like hopping in a time machine. You're going back to camp and suddenly two and a half years later, only three months have passed. You know, yeah. Like, At that 
is such a good way to say it. And, and I think, you know, it was in the middle of this quarantine time, which I think was a very, you know, difficult time for anyone who's making art because you couldn't do it. And so the filming of the movie happened at the best time for me personally, because yeah. I mean, my alternative was, was stay inside and play video games. Right, exactly. So we would go in and, and be, and do what we love to do and play pretend and uh, it was great. Yeah. Jean-Louis, what was it like sort of coming in as the new guy on set? It was exciting. You know, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun. I went into this with a lot of passion because it was my first feature, not only just being the new guy on set. I feel like I've always been the new guy on set. Yes. So it wasn't anything new, but I was definitely looking forward to, you know, learning a lot from Griffin, his method, uh, Luke as well, you know, because these guys were a part of the original film. So I wanted to make sure that I felt right. My character was different. You know, I wanted him to be mature because he had his self-doubt, I guess, as well. And he understood both sides of the picture or both yeah. sides of the story or insecurity. Mm -hmm. And uh, that made me like them understanding that and me understanding them and the rest of the script and finding my place. I thought it was uh, it, it all just kind of fell into place very organically for me. And it just helped bring my excitement even more to life so that I can direct that energy to my character. And it worked, I guess. I think, I think it worked. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I feel like with your character, Tommy, they kind of explored, you know, body image issues in a way that I haven't, I don't think we've seen a lot for male characters. What was it like sort of digging into that side of him? Well, that was a side that um, I was lucky enough to bring myself you know, mm -hmm. to the story. Um, this character was written completely different. I don't even remember what it was. I think it might've been, I don't know, uh, but we changed it and we wanted to bring something very impactful, something that I can uh, tell the story personally, authentic, authentic, I guess, if that's the word I'm looking for. And it was, it was right. It made him almost like um, an extension of Jody. you know, someone that she can talk to as well about her insecurities and him being very understandable about her situation and allowing her to see herself for who she really is and kind of like blocking that voice in her head because we're like I said we're all human unfortunately that's all we are so we all have it and I feel like men nowadays yeah. oftentimes we try to suppress all those insecurities even though they bubble up but it's okay, you know, to be yourself. It's okay to be unique. You know, Luke says it the best when he says that all the uniqueness and all those different attributes about yourself are what makes you very special. Mm -hmm. So even for me, like this is a personal story, but I used to be overweight. Mm -hmm. I used to weigh 250 pounds almost. So that was something, that was a story that it was uh, fair for me to tell mm -hmm. in a story or movie that felt like you had to overcome those insecurity because I remember jumping into the pool with a shirt on because I didn't want people to see who I really was and stuff like that. And, you know, still to this day, sometimes I'm like, Oh, my stretch, my stretch marks, you mm -hmm. know, and then you have a friend come and tell me you're a tiger embrace it. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, so it just, it feels really good. Um, being able to bring that to the screen. Yeah, definitely. Now Griffin, um, Dunkelman was in a very different point in, in this movie, just because, you know, he's moved from the best friend to the boyfriend and what that relationship looks like with Jody. What was your favorite part of exploring that? Um, I think the, the, the best part about that for me was exploring those moments with Ava, uh, in the scenes. Cause you know, I, I spoke to the, to the director and Ava and I, Emily, we, we had a, a lot of conversations about, you know, being able to like improvise or to see, you know, where a scene takes us or if it feels right in the moment to be able to throw something in. And, you know, there were a lot of opportunities that she gave us to, to play around and, and pop off each other. And I think Ava and I got some of the best work that um, her and I, have, the best teamwork that her and I have done together um, on this movie, because we got to, you know, play around with, with, with what that means. You know, we got to figure out, we got to come up with our own, kind of backstories and, and uh, you know, we got to decide how our characters kind of would feel in that moment and how it would align with the script. And then we just got to, you know, be in that headspace and, and, and let it loose and, and just, you know, speak to each other, have an honest conversation or an argument. And that, that was so much fun to me. I thought that was like, it was like psychology, you know, it's really interesting getting inside someone's head and then, you know, being able to explore all those tiny little different facets. Right. Definitely. Now with Luke, Stig kind of had a lot that he needed to atone for in this movie. What was it like sort of bringing that to the character? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it, it was being in the first movie, everyone wanted to be his friend and he didn't understand why. And then this one, he wanted to be friends with everybody again and they didn't want him to be and he was trying to figure out why. So I think it's the complete opposite. He, he's playing, you know, the anti himself from the first movie. Um, and I think what I enjoyed about doing that was finding that those are pretty similar people. It's just you required to be yourself and, and to make friends and to, and to find your group and your herd and your tribe. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's not the most poetic answer, but I, I think it's, it was almost the same character. It's just yeah. the difference. Yeah. There you go. Um, and now I guess this is a question for all three of you, just to kind of wrap it up. Um, the karaoke scenes are really fun, you know, digging oh. to ABBA, Backstreet Boys, classic. Oh. Do you guys have go-to karaoke songs when you do it? Yes. I, I think I have one. I do. Brown Eyed Girl. Because everyone knows all the lyrics. They can sing along with you. There you go. That's Life by Frank Sinatra. I feel like uh, that's always a good hit. Yeah. Uh, we watch it. Well, the one time we went out and did karaoke in New Orleans when we did the first one, I did, um, I did Biggie Smalls. <laughs> I think I did Big Papa. But you did. Can I say I had some serious swagger with it? I know every word you pulled song. it off very I well. I can see that. I can you see have that. to really commit if you're going to do a song like that. You can't do it halfway. <laughs> also, I don't want to miss a thing, Aerosmith. If right. anyone will let me do it, I will do it. Um, oh, You Pretty Things by David Bowie. Oh. Pretty fun. So These basically, are all Come do karaoke with us, Alyssa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, tall girl three, I'll be there. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, that's it for me. It was great talking to you guys. Thanks a lot. We are talking to Angela Kinsey for Netflix's Tall Girl 2. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, my gosh. Of course. I love pop culture. Yeah. Oh, great. That's great to hear. You know, it's funny. As I get a little bit older, I find myself relating more to the parents in teen movies. It's like... <laughs> In this one, when Helene tells Jody that she should focus on the play instead of her relationship, I was kind of on her side because that's pretty good advice. I mean, especially for Helene, who hasn't always been the best at giving advice to her girls. Right. Um, But, you know, I think she knew as a mom what that play was going to mean to her and sort of for her own personal growth and that like the boy stuff will sort itself out, you know, like sort of like take care of you Mm -hmm. and just have fun and don't worry about the boy stuff so much. Yeah. I think that's hard advice to hear as a teenager. Um, One of my favorite scenes in the movie was when your character helped calm Jody down when she's having a panic attack. Can you tell me a little bit about what it was like to film that scene? You know, that scene, um, Ava broke my heart in that scene as a mom. I have a daughter, she's 13. And, um, you know, I just sort of in that moment imagined if, if she was having an anxiety attack and what that would look and feel like. And I thought Ava just did a phenomenal job. And, you know, we did multiple takes and she had to get herself to this place multiple times And I think my mom mode in real life just kicked in. I went into mom mode and I just wanted her to be okay. And I, I didn't know that I would start crying in the scene, but I did when I hugged her because I just was like, oh my gosh, you know, um, so many times in life, we are our own worst enemy, you know? And no one can tear you down the way you can tear yourself down. And my heart just sort of broke for her as the character, you know, and then also you do this thing as an actor where you're in the moment with the, as the character, but then also I just was seeing Ava, this sweet person who, this is a sequel. We've known each other a while now. Right. And I just saw what she did as a performer and where she got herself to. So I think I was just like, all the feels, you know, in the moment. Yeah. Now you have a great rapport with Steve Zahn in these movies that had to be fun to play. So much fun. I mean, I will do anything with Steve Zahn. What else can we do? Netflix family. Right. Come on, me and Steve, we have so much fun together. We just have a real natural back and forth and a rapport. And, um, I, I mean, I, I feel like I have known him all my life. 
Yeah. And I'm supposed to go visit him and his family. You know, he has a farm. I was like, okay, Steve, I'm coming. I'm coming. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, now, um, the sort of teen romantic comedy is such a beloved genre. Do you have any favorites that have sort of stuck with you over the years? Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> I grew up, you know, cause I'm like a hundred years old. Um, <laughs> I grew up with, I think some of the best classic teen rom-coms. I mean, pretty in pink. I mean, okay. Molly Ringwald, come on, just yes. list them. Mm-hmm. I love those movies. I watched them over and over, you know, um, James Spader, uh, guest starred on the office as Robert California. Right. But all I could think of was, you know, like him from pretty in pink. And I was like, ah, you know, that is such a good teen villain. Like, how could oh. you? You know, it's interesting that you mentioned The Office. Um, that was the first show that I really fell in love with. And I feel like Gen Z is sort of discovering it all the time. You know, did your younger castmates, did they grill you about your time on the show? They didn't. They were really sweet about it. You know, um, it's interesting now I'm in the I'm in a little bit of the the beginning of this chapter of my life where I'm sort of the older person on set. <laughs> Yeah. Like Steve and I were the old, the old folks on set, yeah. um, but they were, they were all just really, really sweet. And I, I, oh my gosh, I wait, Griffin was on the office. Really? Wait, was it Griffin? Like I'm talking to a room and there's no one here. <laughs> <laughs> like I, well, I'm, I'm like, I feel like he had a cameo and we had a conversation about it. Hi, I'm old. Hi. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'm, I swear he was, wait guys, Googling. Yes, he was. I love that. He was in the episode. Wumpf. Remember the, the company that Ryan wanted to get going. Yes. WPHF.com. Right. Yeah. I he love was that. in it. Full circle. So, full circle go. moment. There you go. You know, what's it kind of like to have, you know, Gen Z and even younger sort of discovering the office? Like, what's it like to be some part of something that's so enduring? I'm humbled by it. Truly. I loved doing the office. It was one of the joys of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a rewatch podcast with my best friend who just happened to be Pam, Jenna Fisher. Um, So I love this show. And to see new audiences finding it means so much to us as a cast. Uh, every once in a while, you do get some funny comments, though, from the younger generation. Um, I was in Target and uh, a young guy said, you look like a, a, the older version of that lady from the office. <laughs> and, That's so rude. <laughs> and you know what? You just laugh and you're like, I, I am. I, right. I am the older version. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true life. Um, so sort of as a wrap up question, what is one piece of advice that you would give to teenagers watching Tall Girl 2? I mean, it's timeless advice, right? But just you're enough. You are enough. Yeah. You don't have to be anything more. You don't have to compare yourself to things. You yourself are enough and you're wonderful and you're loved. Well, there you go. That is a perfect wrap up. Thank you so much for talking to me today. You're welcome. Have a great day. Today, I'm talking to Emily Ting about her new Netflix movie, Tall Girl 2. Emily, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, So one thing that I really liked about the movie is it sort of acknowledged the idea that, yes, being tall isn't the worst thing that could happen to you, but it doesn't negate how that feels to Jodi. And I feel like that's really true to life for teenagers. Like everything feels like the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think like at that age, everything feels so magnified. But if you kind of like take a step back, you could kind of you know, gain a a wider perspective about where you fit in. So, you know, even though in the first movie, I feel like maybe not everyone could relate to being tall or think that that's an actual problem that someone should feel um, disadvantaged by, but it was very true to Jody's journey. Um, And that's something that she had to deal with and dealing with the mean girls bullying her. So everyone deals with different issues um, and it may not seem like a big problem to you, but it may be for someone else. So always be empathetic. That's what I would say. 
Yeah, definitely. Another thing that I really liked about the movie is the fact that Jody sort of found peace with her adversary, with Kimmy. And I feel like that's something that wouldn't have happened in a teen movie not that long ago. Do you feel like there's sort of a cultural shift there? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I really loved about the sequel is that, you know, I feel like all the side characters and the supporting players from the first movie all got their own arts in the second one. So, you know, whereas um, Kimmy was very much a one note villain in the first one, you know, Mm -hmm. now she's the one who ends up helping um, Jody. So I think the fact like their uh, the evolution of their relationship is definitely very heartwarming. Um, arc in the new film. Um, And I think that's also very true to life, you know, just because you're the villain in one movie doesn't mean that is the only thing about you. It's like everyone has different sides of themselves. Right. Um, Another thing that I think a lot of people will relate to about this movie is the idea of that sort of internal negative self-talk. Can you tell me a little bit about how you developed that? Yeah, well, um, so this is the concept that Sam Wolfson, the the writer of the franchise has built in. And that was honestly what drew me to the project. Um, Just this whole idea of the negative self-talk. Cause I feel like, you know, whereas a lot of people may not necessarily relate to being tall, everyone could relate to having that uh, negative self-talk, that little inner voice that tells you that you're not good enough. I mean, it's something that, you know, as someone who's in her forties that I still deal with. So when I read the script and I realized that was going to be the bully this time around, like I instantly fell in love with the project and I knew I had to do it just because I know it's something that so many people deal with regardless of age. And I just hope that this movie could just let people know that they're not alone in dealing with that and that it's okay. You will get through it. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Now this movie, it has a lot of those sort of like beloved tropes from teen comedies, teen romance or teen romance movies. Do you have any favorite hallmarks of the genre? Yeah. Um, So one of my favorite like recent teen rom-com series is To All the Boys I Loved Before on Netflix, Mm -hmm. which I think like first of all, it was so groundbreaking in its representation of featuring Asian American um, female as a protagonist, but also groundbreaking and it revived the entire teen rom-com genre. And yeah. that's something, it's a genre that I've always loved growing up and Hollywood sort of stopped making it for a while. So I'm really happy that Netflix sort of brought it back. Um, and that was a series that I thought was so successful, has so much heart, mm-hmm. so sweet, so charming. Um, and it was definitely one that I shared with my team as something that we want to aspire to in terms of, you know, elevating the, the tall girl franchise, um, into, into that, to all the boys, uh, level. Yeah, definitely. Um, now what do you hope is sort of the major takeaway from this movie for viewers? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, just in terms of, um, deal, the movie dealing with issues of anxiety, Mm -hmm. um, and these sort of mental health issues that I feel like a lot of teenagers and just people in general are going through two years into this pandemic. Yeah. And you know, like I mentioned before, if this movie could help one person feeling a little less alone Mm -hmm. in their battle with anxiety um, and with mental health, I think it's absolutely worth it. And I think the whole message of, you know, don't listen to that inner voice that's trying to tear you down and find the positive voice from within to lift you up. That's a very positive message that I feel like a lot of people, teenager or not could really use right now. Yeah, definitely. Now you mentioned earlier that um, one thing you liked about this movie was the exploration of the side characters. Was there a particular one that you wanted to explore? Yeah, so for me, I feel like Kimmy's arc was the one that I was most blown away by because she was so one note in the first movie and to give her this full, beautiful arc, you know, I thought, which is really lovely. And, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I love the, um, the arc that, um, for Rita goes through yeah. in the second film. I think, um, it would delight a lot of fans of the first movie and it's quite unexpected. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really happy, 
um, to see that in the film. And even like Stig, who ended the first film sort of as the villain, you know, he um, did that thing to Jody, which watch the first film and you'll, <laughs> you'll understand what, what happened. But yeah, he starts off the second film being kind of the guy that nobody wants to be friends with, but then he really earned um, everyone's friendship by the end. So I just think there's yeah. so much positivity mm -hmm. um, in the second film in terms of redeeming all the side characters that might have ended the first one as villains or as the outcast. Yeah. So for my last question, Tall Girl 3, if that happens, <laughs> where would you want to go with that? Oh, my God. Um, well, first of all, I don't know if I'm going to be involved with Tall Girl 3. I haven't been invited back to the party yet. But if I can, I would, you know, like, so Tall Girl 1 and 2 happened in junior year. So I would love to see what happens to them in senior year and just grappling with applying to college and what's the next step in their life. And, yeah, and just, like, dealing with becoming an adult so I would really love to see that and just on a visual level I would love to stage a prom scene that's always been my dream to design a prom on yeah. film. all right well I'm rooting for that then yeah um, well that's it for me thank you so much for taking the time oh, thank you so much